Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is me trying to do an extra problem, one that I haven't done before. Hopefully not too difficult. I am fasting uh, right now, uh, about 20 hours in, trying to do a three-day fast. So yeah, okay, today's why I'm Instacom, Rex Paragon, which can, which sounds, uh, as someone who has, I, I wouldn't say I have a computational geometry background, but it, I have taken a number of classes, when, but that was like 20 years ago or something, uh, back in college. So uh, so yeah, so Comics Polygon as a name already scares me. So let's look at how, how uh, <laughs> let's look at how this problem is, but yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see, okay. Uh, 469, Convex Polygon, you're given an array of points on the XY plane where points is XY, okay. Return true if this polygon is convex and false otherwise. Okay, so that's not that bad. Um, I think the, I mean, I wanna say it's not that bad only in the sense that for me it's not that bad, but it is a hard problem. Uh, it is a hard problem if you haven't seen it before. Um, And I don't know that they have uh, collinear lines and stuff like that. There may be other edge cases that we haven't think about because you know when we when it comes to computational geometry, there are a lot of just like edge cases and degenerate cases and weird things. Um, so I, I do worry a little bit about that, and I don't think I see anything that like um, yeah, the points are unique is fine, but collinear points does some stuff. But uh, but but that said, the um, and I've, I have to try to think about remembering all this stuff off my head. I mean, maybe we might need to resort to cheating. And, and by that, I just mean like a sh short Google. But what I would say about this, uh, about Comics Polygon, is that one thing about Comics Polygon is that um, if you go around the perimeter, um, there's nothing to the left of any line. Um, or depending on how you want to say left, right? Uh, and, and and that's the, for me, that's the easiest way of thinking about it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm so I hang on. I'm bringing up the um, the drawing pad. But what I, what I mean by that is nothing ha having left on any other line is let's say you have some polygon, right? Oops. Um, the idea here is uh, uh, the idea is me changing the color, but it's not coming up. <laughs> but like let's say you know this line, then that means that uh, or, well, let's make it this way, uh, a directional line from here, that means that all the points are to the right and none to the left, right? That's basically the idea. Um, and you could kind of, you know, uh, uh, kind of, oops. Like if you have something like this, then you can see that um, for say this line, there, there are points to the left. And it turns out that um, you don't have to check n square points though. Okay, 10 to the 4. So yeah, you can check um, n square points. And of course, that means that, you know, um, if you only need to take uh, three points in a row, because in the case that, um, yeah, it's something to the left, then... Um, if there's something to the left, then other points would have it. Another way, there's um the so I sorry that I'm struggling a little bit because haven't touched these things in a while. So I'm just to think about it a little bit. But the other thing that you can actually kind of think about, right, is that it turns out if you look at every three points, um, and this is actually mathematically or implementationally the same thing. But another way to think about it is that if you look at any three points on on uh on the sh on the edge, right, or any three consecutive points, right? So let's say we have these three again. Um, you could draw a triangle, right? Three points make a triangle. Um, and the, the thing is that here, you can actually make make a triangle with an area, right? And you can make the same one here. It turns out if you look at the signed area of the triangle, um, and when I say sign, I mean the, that there's a positive or negative sign of the area, um, if it is, I forget the convention to be honest. Um, I, but one of the ways is one of the ways to the right, and the other ways to the left. Um, so if all of them are kind of pointing at the wrong direction, then um, and it depends how if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, um, of course. Um, 
and you may they may not let you know which way to go, but but yeah, but basically that that's the idea. And it turns out that the checking to the, if something is to the left of something in uh, linear algebra is the same as the signed area, right? Or like the, the, getting the sign of the signed area. So that's basically kind of the idea behind this problem. Um, you, you basically take the... Um, is it that part of the... I, yeah, you basically take the area of... I want to say the cross product because the dot product doesn't really make sense, right? That part is just a degree. But yeah, you take the area of the uh, the cross product to to do it. But yeah, uh, mm. okay. Uh, I'm trying to think how to uh, how do I do the cross product again? <laughs> uh, but yeah, but okay. So then maybe you have something like is left or collinear, um, and basically the idea here is uh, collinear. Hmm. I don't know if I'm spelling that right. Collinear. Uh, let's say we have some point one, point two, point three, right? And basically. Now we just want to get the return area of P1, P2, P3 is, um, let's just say greater than or equal to zero. Uh, maybe just, a st uh, the collinear case is very tricky to handle. That's why I'm kind of thinking about it. Uh, right, let's just do its left for now. Right? And basically the area um, is going to be the cross product. This I might actually have to, do I have to Google? Mm, all right. Let me see if I remember it. I, I don't know that I remember it, but okay. Um, so dx1. I don't remember the cross product. <laughs> uh, I, I could probably figure it out if I have to on like a contest or something, but because now they have to like draw the draw the uh, the matrix. I don't know, I, but yeah, this is a very silly part. I mean, it's not hard if you know the stuff, but it's also like I don't know that you can easily come up with this. If uh, I'm just gonna Google it, the cross product. I forget how cross product works. Oh, I I, I forget the exact um, formation. I don't want to get it wrong and then like spend. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not that bad actually. All right. So basically, you have, uh, okay. Let's say d one x is equal to or d x d one is equal to uh, p two. Okay, actually, I think I, I remember now. Um, so now we have two lines, right? Uh, two, three, I guess, maybe. I don't know if this is a better convention. Because I, I don't remember all the conventions anymore. And then now this is just um, x times y minus whatever, right? So, duh, 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 duh. but I, I don't know that this, uh, this is right in, in the signs. Like, I, th this is. It should be roughly right, but like, I, I don't know. Hmm. Right? Uh, yeah. I do wonder if there are any collinear problems, but let's just say it's collinear. And technically speaking, I think, um, well, technically speaking, this this is um, for a cross product. It is the 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 area of the um, parallelogram that that uh, fits the two lines, the the two segments. Um, but because we're only checking to see whether it's positive or zero or negative, 
um, we don't have to worry about, or, you know, otherwise you have to divide it by two, but here, then we could keep everything as an integer. But, uh, hmm, right? So, do, 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 do. let me just... Right, so, okay. So, do, 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 do. I'm just going to print it out for, for a sec. Um, this is one plus one. Wow, what, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm on a fast, but. Okay, I mean, this should be consistent, which is good. But, uh, okay, I don't know. Because hmm. I, I just don't know whether my signs are doing... I mean, the, the thing is that... Um, the thing is that it actually doesn't matter if you're going counterclockwise or clockwise. As long as all the signs are the same, that's what you would check for. But, I, but the problem with that is that the collinear part may not be true. Um, and I don't know that if there's a collinear, I mean, it's not an input, obviously, but I, I guess that you can assume that they are, but yeah, okay, fine. That is annoying if there exist collinear points, just in general, but yeah, okay, fine. So left is equal to tr true, right is equal to true, right? So if it's left of... I'm gonna write this very awkwardly. We'll see how this goes. I don't know why I deleted what I wrote and then kind of wrote basically the same thing. If it's left, if it's left, then right is equal to force. Um, else if it's collinear, then we don't do anything, I think, maybe. So if it's collinear, we just kind of ignore this case. Else, uh, left is equal to force. So then now, if left, then we return, oh, wait. Then now we return left or right. So if one of these is all true, then it should be good, maybe. I don't know, we'll see if this works. All right, I guess that works out. I didn't know, I, I mean, this is just tricky because of the linear place. I don't know that there are or not. I mean, you. I think they don't really talk about it, so you can assume that there are. And it's just like way weird because it kind of fits, like if, if you are not careful about this, um, it can definitely kind of lead you astray. And some of my slowness and hesitancy is because I have experience with coding all this up before. So I'm kind of very, um, very scared about it but overall i mean is it a good problem i don't know it's just that it, it, i don't feel like this is a good interview problem i don't know if oh what what the what did i click on google i don't know why um i don't know if this like thing is you know like google interviewed or whatever um because it's just not a very good interview problem because you just require specific knowledge right like the coding is pretty okay like maybe the edge cases but those edge cases are all also specific knowledge right um, I mean, if you're working with like, I don't know, robots in, in real space or some, I don't know, some kind of thing that requires computational geometry, then sure, I guess this is like something that you should know. Otherwise, eh, hard to say. But yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.